Well, Sharon, Henry, good to see you. Welcome to our home visit. Yeah, good to see you. It's been a long time. Where have you been, Pastor? <laughs> I know where I've been. Where have you been? <laughs> Actually, we've seen you on YouTube pretty much every night, so which is we're thankful for that, by the way, and, yes. and the whole staff. And the staff, yeah. yes. Yeah. I want to uh, send you and everyone greetings from the North County here in Yakult. Um, I happened to uh, read in a local uh, newspaper, they had an article in there and it said that uh, the, zip, the zip code in our area in Yakal and some of them further north, they have absolutely no uh, virus, uh, viruses reported at all. And I was really feeling good and boastful about that and I was telling a friend of mine about that and he says, well, you know, you got to have be around people in order to spread it. <laughs> for which I'm thankful in a way, yes. Well, you're, <laughs> saying, you're saying that in Yakult there is a permanent social distancing that happens. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> that's pretty good. Well, it's keeping you all healthy, so we're, we're thankful. Yeah. Yes, yes. Hey, hallelujah, Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Isn't that great news to share? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I'd love to. I'd love to pray for you and then uh, get this conversation rolling. All right. So let's say okay. a prayer. Okay. Father, I thank you for Henry and Sharon, and I thank you that we have an opportunity to talk today, and we pray your blessing on this time that uh, we'll be filled up, encouraged, uh, edified, built up in our faith. And we pray that uh, that you would guide them in their lives to be a witness for Christ in this world. And we thank you for, uh, for the fact that you've put your spirit in their hearts and, uh, and that you've led them to St. John so that we can have community with them and enjoy being church together. Uh, bless us now as we talk the faith and, and check in with each other. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, I've got, uh, I've got a few questions to ask you today and uh, just to see how, how you're doing. Um, uh, I love to start with this question. Tell me something good. What, what kind of good things have you been experiencing? There's so much bad news. It's good to hear something good. Sure, you are. I, I have two good things. <laughs> My first one is up here where we live, there's a lot of traffic starting about 4.30 in the morning because many people in town work over in Oregon. So lots of traffic. And then when they come home, lots of traffic. Well, there isn't much anymore. <laughs> so it's easier to get out of our driveway. That's pretty and helpful. Yes, yes, that's very helpful because there's a corner just down below us. That's the one they can sneak up on us on that one. Uh, the other one, we had gone to the grocery store looking for some five-pound bag of flour about three weeks ago, and there was nothing there. A young woman came up, and she got down on her knees and was looking in the back of the bottom shelf. Lo and behold... We struck up a conversation, number one, because she was on her knees, and she said she had been looking for flour in all the stores in Battleground, and there was none. So she came to this store. I think she learned from her other experiences she had to get down low to find, find the flour. So she got down there, and there were three bags of flour on the very back wall. So she pulled them out and she said, would you like one? Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, thank you very much. And she took the second one and she left the third one on the shelf for somebody else. Beautiful. You don't usually see that. Right. Had that, had that been toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> she was going to make biscuits for her family. That's what she needed the flour for. See, that's pretty great. And you didn't even have to stoop down low to get it. 
No. Yeah. Well, Usually I, was... I can see on the bottom <laughs> shelf, but not yeah. that one. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor, yeah. for the lead in. Uh, oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing some good things. I'm glad you can get out of your driveway, and I'm glad there's flour on the shelves. Yes. <laughs> well, has there been anything tough about this uh, this situation for you? It's good to hear that there aren't any cases of, of coronavirus up in Yakult, but uh, is there, you know, you've been in more than out. Uh, any grief or loss about this situation for you? Well... We can share a brief story of what happened. We, uh, we knew this, uh, this lady. She was probably in her 40s. And uh, she had operated a small restaurant up here in the North County. And uh, a few years back, she, she lost the restaurant because of financial issues. And then um, uh, she was working at other restaurants and that, and that's where we got to know her as we went to the, to the restaurants there. And uh, so then uh, a few months back, she was able to get her finances together and reopen the restaurant again. And, uh, you know, she was beginning to make it come back. And then along came this coronavirus and that. And uh, anyway... It was too much for her. She couldn't handle it, and uh, she committed suicide. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it's so sad. We, I mm -hmm. haven't, I have not heard of this on the news, but I'm sure that uh, there must be people out there that are desperate. And and as time goes on, we'll become more desperate. And uh, those kinds of things can happen. And so you know, we continue to pray to the Lord that, uh, you know, that they would receive some comfort and assurance and et cetera. And, uh, but that's a sad thing to have it happen to somebody uh, that you knew. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm sorry for your loss in yeah. your community. Yeah. Yeah. What's the, what's the hope that we can share for people? I mean, we can't, um, we can't be the, the, the vehicle that stops every tragedy and and uh, and every hopeless person and turn them around from from these choices. But yeah, what boy? What is what is the hope that we have to share? Yeah, well, you know, it's. I'm sure we all ask we all ask ourselves, you know, why why is the Lord allowing this to happen, or why does it happen, and so forth. And of course, it's way beyond our understanding why. And uh, there is a reason we can speculate and so forth, but uh, some good things have come, are, some good things are coming out of this, I think, in that uh, you can see that people are starting to step up, they're starting to share and care about their neighbors more, and, uh, and that's a good thing. And uh, I'm sure that uh, there will be also people who will be brought to their knees uh, back to the Lord again uh, because of this. I'm not saying that that's why the Lord, uh, you know, allows it to happen. I'm just saying that that is a positive outcome. Yes, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, that the Lord is working in all things, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So in the middle of all this, we uh, we share the hope that we have in Christ with whoever will listen, because when someone is on their knees or flat on their back, uh, maybe that's the time that they can actually finally receive Christ through faith. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. Well, I uh, I know from a personal personal experience, I've uh, gone to church pretty much all of my life and so forth. And uh, here about a year ago, when I was uh, diagnosed with prostate cancer. Uh, it it really brought me to my knees and, and brought me so much closer uh, to the Lord. And I tell people that, you know, in a way, having a cancer diagnosis was a blessing, especially since I, I survived it with treatment. And so you just never know sometimes what, what, the, what, what turns out out of catastrophes and bad things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Blessings come in really strange packages sometimes. They do, they do, yeah. The package itself might not be the blessing, but the blessing is somehow involved in it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Hey, what are, uh, what are a few things you're looking forward to when we finally get to get out of our houses? The one thing I miss a lot is hugs. <laughs> well, tell Henry to hug you more. <laughs> well, I'm practicing social <laughs> distancing. <laughs> well, I mean with friends I haven't seen in a while, my pastor and, you know, people that I'm used to hugging. Yeah. Damn, I hug all the time. Yes. Yeah, it's nothing new there. <laughs> Yeah, Sharon is one of my most faithful huggers at the church door as, as we come out of church in the mornings. But yeah, I wonder how long we'll have to keep up social distancing until we can finally, you know, that, uh, that handshake of peace and that uh, greeting with a hug at the end. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look yeah. forward to that. Yeah. Sure. And uh, the one thing that, you know, we all have our habits, you know what I mean? Our, our habits and that, and, and, and when those habits are disrupted, why, you know, it takes away a little bit from, from your enjoyment of life. Well, people who know us know that we are regulars at Wendy's, okay? And, and of course, and back in the good old days, we would go ahead and go in the dining room area, and we always call it the Senior Citizen Steakhouse because the steak is all ground up for the senior citizens. <laughs> Plus also, you can't beat the price. You know, it's a, it's a good price too for what you're getting. But anyway, the story I'm getting to is this, that uh, I always order the same thing whenever I go. And so the, the uh, food prepper, the people that wait on you, they, they know exactly what I'm going to order. I don't even have to finish my sentence. And the funny thing about it is that when you start going through the drive-thru now, as soon as I begin my order and I, and I say, you know, no, no, and add, add, they know exactly who, who, who is. is coming along, you know, type thing. But, uh, yeah, and then, of course, we're just going to miss the um, coming to church. You know, you can go, you know, you can, you know, you can, you, God is always near us, with us, and we can pray to him, we can communicate with him. And you can sing hymns. We like to send hymns on YouTube and follow along and stuff like that. And uh, but you know, there's just something more. There's another dimension when you're in church. Okay, when you're doing a group worshiping and praising and and so forth. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward, looking forward to that day when that comes. Yeah, yeah come see if my seat is still there. <laughs> you know it. We have it reserved for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we have we, we where we sit where we have the, the same people in front and the same people in back, you know. And once in a while, someone will be gone on vacation for two weeks, and they'll be kind of worried whether they still have their seat when they come back. <laughs> Talking about Judy and Larry now, just to be a little more specific. <laughs> I'm sure they'll see this and know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, have you been any learning any lessons from Jesus in the middle of all this? What's he been teaching you? To look out for your family and your neighbors mm -hmm. up here. That's kind of important. And for us, it's, we've got family on the one side of us and there's neighbors all around, but you don't normally you're not normally in contact with a lot of your neighbors. And um, it's nice, nice to have them nearby if you need them. Yeah, it's amazing how um, uh, the churches, we all are learning something about neighboring during this that, you know, just as, Amer as typical Americans, we might not be that great at neighboring but you know as christians we're called to really love our neighbors so uh, you have to be around them and talk with them to do it so we're getting a a, a little uh, help with that right now aren't yeah we? yeah well maybe maybe the old the old adage that absence makes the heart grow fonder <laughs> maybe that will happen you know with people at church and your you know neighbors and friends and so forth yeah yeah fair enough fair enough Hey, um, is there anything that you'd like to say to your St. John family? We miss you. <laughs> yeah. Look yeah. forward to seeing them again and hugging them. Yeah. And, you know, you, you, you don't need to hear this, but, but 
but you need to hear it because you, you can never be told often enough that, that Jesus loves you very much. He cares for you. And uh, the hard thing for all of us to do is to turn over our issues and yeah. problems and cares over to him. And uh, you, you know that uh, he's got your back all the way. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful, beautiful message. Thank you. Hey, I wonder if you'd close up our time together by, uh, by praying for us. Okay. Uh, Sharon, you want to, let's see, we've got to look at, we've got to look at our cheat sheet back here and see. Sure. Says, oh, okay. I'll go ahead and start first. And I just want to go ahead and, and read uh, just a little bit of scripture, scripture here and then have a prayer. Uh, when, I, when I say my daily prayers, I try to follow the template given in Paul's letter to the Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 8. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and then thank him for all that he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about the things that are excellent and worthy of praise. So following that template, I'd like to go ahead and, and say a little prayer. And then I think after that, Sharon has a little prayer she would like to also share. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for blessing all of our people our workers who provide both essential and non-essential products and services and for businesses. At this time, we ask you to continue your blessings on all. For workers and businesses, we ask that you provide the strength, faith, and the endurance to trust you that it will all work out for our good in the end. You have told us that you are with us always, and we are counting on that, Lord. Give those who are suffering comfort, healing, and the assurance that you love them dearly. We ask these in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. And I'd like to have a little prayer. Lord, we know you're in charge of all that's going on, and you're watching over us. We pray for your hands covering all the health care workers across the country. Our son is a doctor in a hospital in Oklahoma, and our daughter-in-law is a nurse in another hospital there also. We ask you to keep all frontline workers safe and well. Give them assurance, Lord, that you are there giving comfort and peace to carry them through this pandemic. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Before, before, we, uh, before we leave, I was, <clears throat> I was on, the, uh, on the internet, Facebook, and, that, and uh, our friend Judy, everybody knows our friend Judy from church, Judy posted this, and I just wanted to share it. Uh, how uh, how appropriate is it? Okay, a little bit higher. Can you see it there, Pastor? Yes. I can, can you read it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can't read it. So would you read it? <laughs> yeah, I'm on it. Lord, I put everything in your hands today. My family, my health, my home, my security, my fears and feelings. You're the only one I trust with all I have and all I am. Thank you for carrying my burdens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thanks for sharing that. And thanks for sharing your time with me today. It was a joy to talk to you and to see your faces again. And I look forward to a time, hopefully real soon, where we can be in the same room together, too. Yeah. Yeah. God Looking bless forward you. to seeing you all. God bless you. Blessings to you all.